Hello everybody, welcome back. Bumpy McSquiggums here. This is my weekly run. This is my week one run through Dungeons of Dreadmore. <clears throat> I decided I was going to do Dungeons of Dreadmore each week, but I also assumed that I would eventually open up to other games, games that have like randomly generated stuff, roguelikes if you will. Um, I just kind of run with that, just do different games every week, maybe pick four or something and do one each week. Um, until the until I figure out what I want to do exactly, I was just going to stick with Dungeons of Dreadmore. But as we see, Dungeons of Dreadmore is kind of a massively huge game, if you do well in it. I'm sure I'm running a little slower than most people, but I think I'm doing okay. So, in case I didn't say it, I am Bumpy McSquiggums. This is my run-through week one of Dungeons of Dreadmore, and we are going to continue. This is episode six. And, in theory, we will continue on without much problem. So, we're going to grab up everything that we were unable to do before. We're going to pull the lever. No idea what it's going to do. Oh no, traps have been activated. Eh, whatever. I don't care about traps. Oh, look at that cool little fish picture on a wall there. I'm excited. Alright, time to smack some more diggles. I do remember there is a better weapon I could go get. I think it's eight as opposed to the three I have now. I'm still hoping to find something better down here. Uh, I'd hate, I really hate the idea or conce concept of having to backtrack, but if it's what we have to do, it's what we have to do, and we will do it, so. Anyway, guys, we're going to continue to push forward, kick down doors, walk back and forth. There we go. Alright, I think I'm going to hit this zombie with my geographical, geological, and geometrical... Alright, maybe not geometrical. But, with my geological... geological... There we go, geological skills. That's the word I'm looking for. Ooh, I vandalismed with that too. Nice. Nice, very nice. Alright, so everybody got stunned. They all got smacked quite a bit. Captain Acid Boots coming up to hit me now. We're going to have to deal with him. Alright, we're gonna move. Yeah, see, he put me in acid. And... Critical hit. C -c -c critical hit. And he dies very noisily, if you hadn't noticed. <clears throat> Alright, so, we are going to continue our adventure. The Leather Curas, we've already moved beyond that. We have quite a nice set of armor. We have a Steel Curas, and we have an Amazing Shield, so... We are doing quite all right. We just got a potion of lively regrowth. I don't exactly know what that does. I think that's like a slow over time regeneration. We're going to drink. All right, it looks like I have extra damage with my melee attacks because I have dark thoughts flowing through my mind, which is okay. <clears throat> it is okay. We're gonna move out of the steam trap. We are doing quite well. And, oh look, there's another trap there, we will trigger it, and boom. More experience, we're already halfway to our next level. We have taken the interdimensional uh, jump to a new area, an empty flask, I'm okay with that. There is a trap at Tesla Mine, not a big deal. But yeah, things seem to be going quite nicely for us. We are going to double check once again that everything is running swimmingly, and it seems to... All right, looks like there's some javelins in here, and just a little baddie baddie to critical hit. to defend, which is not all that impressive. So, going to open uh, that door. Well, since we're here, we're also going to go to the right, see what's over here before we go left. I would like to clear the area. All right, we're going to put some fire down. Critical hit. We're also going to use this. We're just making a mockery of all things coming against us. They have no chance of survival. We just pretty much, oh, I'd say one shot, but that's not true at all. Oh, look at that. The axe guitar. Now that looks cool. Maybe that is what we'll go toward. I don't know how many plastic pieces we've gotten. In fact, I don't think we've actually uncovered any plastic. I could be wrong on that, but... From what I do recollect, we have not actually acquired plastic in any way, shape, or form. 
whether it's unprocessed or processed. So that may be a way off before you get it. And normally I find quite a bit of ooh, plastic. Surprise! Eh, we'll get the toxic lobby in that. He'll do some damage, but it shouldn't be anything cool. There we go, he is down. We are still woefully overpowered with our weapon. I am looking forward to leveling up again, because uh, that will be... I believe we actually get a skill with uh, our axe at that point, an AoE. So, we will complement our geology quite well, and in fact, I think if I ever do... Well, when I do run my next axe guy, battle geology will definitely be one of my skills that I choose. Because I am enjoying the battle geology quite a bit. <sighs> Quite a bit, guys. The battle geology is very nice. Alright, let's well, take us way up here. I don't want to be up here. We are going to attempt that. It did nothing. We are going to go back into that. And we are going to head west. Westward ho! That is what we are going to do. There's a store, and I think I may even visit the store. Our inventory is pretty empty. I guess we don't need to yet. Maybe we'll find another store that actually sells something we want, and we just do it all at once. And I pulled the lever, and it doesn't tell me that anything has happened. Oh, look at the diggles. Aren't they cute? Alright. So we'll put some fire out there. We will do this. Um, That's all we really need to do. Alright, they're still standing. Put some more fire on them. Drop one. We'll drop two. We'll drop three. We'll drop four. You, you do know I'm at least five levels higher than you are, right? I don't really care. That was actually a decent chunk. Not, not amazingly, but a decent chunk of experience. That we got out of that. I can't complain with that. They did... I'm pretty sure zero damage to me. Yeah, we'll bash it open. Hey, a bonsai bomb. Sounds exciting. Whether it is or not, I don't know. Alright, this is far less exciting and far less not dangerous. I'm going to throw that on him, and then I'm going to back up. Your health is low. Because for some reason, my health is low. I don't really understand why. So I'm going to do a little sneaky trick here. And I am going to petrify the electro blobby, and nobody can get to me. Well, hello, zombie. I suppose I could eat my plum as well. Take down the zombie. Critical hits. And then we will come back down here. The electro blobby is down. We will take out the mummy. And now it's going to be this guy's turn. Bring it. Poorly cloned hero, I'm not afraid of you. Your little boot of love. Critical hit. Now that didn't feel good, but Critical hit. it does not matter. You are now dead. Alright, so. Though not the most amazing victory ever. It was well enough. And we are going to be victorious, I think, overall. This is already a victory for me, guys. This is as far as I've made it in Dungeons of... Oh, no, that's not true either. I apologize. I made it to level 3, maybe 4. I believe I made it to level 4. And... It just feels like this has taken so much longer. But I suppose I did the other one over several days. This I'm all trying to fit into one day. So... Come on. There we go. Alright, we are going to eat some more food, guys, because we do not want to fall victim to death under any circumstances. So we will march around here for a few seconds, get our health back up. There we go. We're going to put some damage on her. She will hit us once. She will die. We will disarm El Trap. El Trapador. Lobby seems to be doing work on us. Or the extra ectoplasmic extension. That was not a fun experience. 
I'm sorry to say. Slowly but surely, we're clearing the entire area. I don't know what that does. I'm very scared. I'm going to read. I believe one buffs us, one hurts us. We'll see. The text contains especially lengthy tangent... tangentile? Okay. Tangential? Tangitational? I don't know. Descriptions of the dishes which appear to... appear at the feasts of nobility. You're unable to extract any useful information. I don't know what that even means. So, it does appear that we have a wall sconce. It says ice is over this way and fire is the other way. We're going to take that route. Iborian empowerment. I'm okay with that. That, despite popular belief, I don't know if it's popular belief or not, but that is actually a good thing. Sadly, I will not be able to utilize it whatsoever because we will be long gone by then. Alright, so taking a look around, we gotta go south here. Or north and then west. Ah, eh, we'll do... We'll do north and west, why not? We will deal with El Mummy. Kill us once, we'll drop her. There's another one. Drop her too. My health is fine. My health is like at 50%, maybe a little bit less than that. Ah, Diggles. Diggle's gonna dig. Diggle slip. Diggle slip. We need the diggle eggs. Or at least pick them up. Drop a diggle. Drop another diggle. Loot. And... Okay, so... I think we're gonna clear this area first, and then we'll move down into this area. I think if we're lucky and nothing horrible happens, we should have enough time to clear all of level 2 in this episode. That is my sincerest hope. If we accomplish that, I will be happy. And then we get to move on to level 3 in episode 7. Which is just amazing to me that we are going to be into episode 7. Considering how this started off, I never expected to get past episode 2. Heck, I never even expected to get past half of episode 1. I thought this was going to be a ridiculously short run. And well, it turned out to be quite alright, guys. Some near close calls, um, but in all, it's it's been really fun. I've had a lot of fun. I've learned quite a bit. Potions are like the end all be all. You should have them at all times. I have not found any rust, and it makes me quite sad. Rust would make me, or would allow me to have some healing potions, which would make me very happy. But I have not found this yet, so I'm quite sad. We're gonna smack the zombie with that thing. Walk around, pick up all the random things that are laying on the ground. He's back up, smack him once, and finish him off. And we'll grab another leather belt. We will gather these things. Oops. I assume there's some real pattern. Probably whatever grouping or order you put them in gives you a different vending machine. Whether it's food, drink, or something else. Just drink again. I don't really know, I haven't paid that much attention. Oh my, there's Eyeball Shrine and horrible things in this room. So we are going to be careful. As much as we can be. I'm sorry guys, I'm trying to concentrate to make sure I do not make any mistakes. Mistakes are very bad in situations where there's lots of enemies and you in this game. You can get cornered, you can get trapped, just many, 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 many bad things can happen. I want to avoid each and every one of those bad things if I can at all help it. So, a little damage on the white there. This one seems to want to fight me, but I don't think it's going to matter because he's going down. And we've completed some part of the quest. I like that. No quest withstanding right now. There is an eyeball shrine. Huh. Sorry, there is an eyeball shrine. Let's check out the shield. It is nowhere near as powerful as the one that we have. I honestly don't think we will find one until much later in the game, if ever, what we have. We were lucky that we found the bolt of uh, mass destruction and some of those uh, squid 
bolts that we were able to sell for a tremendously large amount of cash, or Zorkmids as it were, and that we were able to afford a shield that we probably were never going to get deep enough to see drop off of anything. Now I don't even know how the looting works in this game. Whether it's all random all throughout, or if certain levels have a certain type or amount or skill or level of drop, whatever you want to put there. I really don't know. I don't know how the looting works. I know sometimes I find exactly what I need, and other times I don't, so... Diggle go down. Alright guys, let's continue on here. Pushing forward. Oh, <clears throat> there's a door I missed. Aha! Ooh, that's not a nice roll. Alright, we... We'll do this! And all sorts of horrible things are going to happen to the folks that challenge me. I take that down, get our rusty sword, get our black pearl, nothing else. No, 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 we're good? Okay. <clears throat> well, that's done. We're going to charge down here. Oh, another door that I missed. Room full of diggles. Can't say I'm overwhelmingly impressed. I'm on fire, which probably isn't a good thing to stand in. Oh no, we're getting surrounded by diggles! We're actually about to level. We may even level from finishing off these diggles. I kind of like. Well, I gotta tell ya. We, are, we would really be in trouble if we uh, weren't so heavily armored. Alright, one diggle hits. down, two diggles down, three diggles down. Come on, man, this one's really hard to kill. There we go. Drinking from the fire hose. Alright, so, we have deciphered. Our geology is done. We are going axe route. We're going to increase our damage. We're going to increase our counter hit and lower the enemy dodge chance. And then we'll get the Norwegian Axendo. Axnado, rather, sorry. Which will enable us to do an AoE attack. Which I am very, very partial to AoE, AoE attacks. I don't know if you've noticed this. But I absolutely love them. I love dominating the entire grouping of guys. All at once. I just think that is fantastic. And I will always, always utilize AoEs. If I can. In any way, shape, or form. It is what I enjoy. One of the games I'm really, really looking forward to playing with you, or for you guys. Doing a Let's Play of. Is, um... Arclash Legacies. That that game is a ton of fun. It is challenging, yet uh, the storyline's okay. I'm not gonna say it's the greatest ever, but it's it's decent. They did pretty good voice acting. Uh, overall, overall, it's a really good game. I enjoyed a little bit of it, and I even was watching a let's play, in which that really convinced me to actually get the game. And um. I don't know who else you guys watch Let's Plays of, but if you ever get a chance and you want to check out a guy who does really well, really I hope cool to be hits. as good as him one day, <clears throat> it's Splattercat. He does a phenomenal job. He is linked on my, uh, he is linked on my little YouTube there. He's one of my featured channels. If you ever get a chance, guys, check him out. He does phenomenal stuff. He does a lot of strategy games, too. It's kind of what attracted me to his uh, Let's Plays. It was just the fact that he plays a lot of the games that I enjoy and love. In reality, and he's also been a really nice guy, really cool guy. He's helped me out, actually. Helped me with some of the, uh... Oh, the different ins and outs of how YouTube works, and... Well, just setting things up in general. He's been a plethora of information, and he's a funny guy, so... Definitely give him a check out if you guys can. Don't leave me forever. I'm sure he's quite a bit better than me, but... You still love me, right? You guys will still love me? I hope so. But, regardless, check him out. He does a lot of stuff that I will probably do as well. I don't want to directly compete with him, so I've been trying to do things that are somewhat off of what he does. But I, I gotta tell you, it's just he, he's got such great taste with the games that he chooses to play that, well, we're definitely going to run in some of the same circles. So hopefully, hopefully that's all good and well. We will see. But yes, check out Splattercat. I think you can check him out, Splattercat Gaming, or just go to one of the featured channels on my, or the only featured channel on my, uh, on my YouTube channel itself. 
Um, one other thing I want to mention, guys, when I do get this new computer that is lingering, it is hanging around, it is ready for us. Um, Dota 2. I had already set up most of the stuff for the recording and everything else a few months back because I wanted to start streaming Dota 2 on Twitch TV and stuff like that, and I plan to do these things when uh, the new computer comes through. So you guys can check that out. And I even have another YouTube account set up, Bumpy Dota, so I will I will link the two together and you guys will be able to, if you're interested in Dota 2, to check that out. I will try to do some how-tos on that and hopefully I'll have a few guinea pigs that will let me actually teach them a little bit on how to play Dota 2. They added a new coaching feature to Dota 2, which is excellent, because you can now take a bigger part in training as opposed to being in the game and having to try to do what you need to do plus what they need to do. You can coach them in a bot game. I mean, all sorts of things. Dota 2 is constantly improving and in, in my opinion and several others, it is by far and away the best Dota-like game as it was originally called, but you have League of Legends that has decided to make it a MOBA type game or MOBA game. So, six of one, half a dozen of the other as they say. Still, it is the basically the originator, and it is fantastic. It is a great game, and I highly recommend it to anyone. There's only a couple catches to what I say with this. It's a rather steep learning curve, and people are not always the nicest. You range from all sorts of horrible, horrible, horrible players that are just bad, horrible players that are bad but think they're good, Horrible players that know they're bad, don't care to get better. I mean, there's just so much in the game that is so frustrating, and I, I won't lie, I rage quite a bit playing Dota 2. I've settled down sometimes, other times I just, I immediately start off just negative, and it, it's not okay for me to do that, and I am working on it, guys. But the, the things that I guess that wear on me the most in Dota 2 is the fact that you get those people who who think they know what they're doing, and you'll have three or four people, in. so, so it's, a, it's a five on five team game, if you guys have no idea what I'm talking about. So you have five people on your team, five people on the enemy team, and you pretty much go at each other. There's a lot more to it, but that's the basic premise. So you have to rely on four other people. Now usually when I play, almost always, I play with at least one person I know is not a complete moron. So I almost always queue up or play with one of my friends. They're not always the best players. There's times they try new heroes and they do terrible. There's times I try new heroes and do terrible. But uh, overall, they have at least a, approximate knowledge of the game. They know what they're doing. They know what they should be doing. And they understand. They may not always be able to do all these things, but they know, you know? And that's that's really a huge part of the game. Once you understand, then you can start tweaking your actual playing to match up with your knowledge. Is I guess how I always like to word it. Like, I know way more than my skill allows me to do. If it came down to only knowledge, I'd be a pro. Or very near a pro. I'm still in the, in the upper skill bracket. Um, before they did away with the whole... What is it they, what they call it? The, uh, there was a way to check uh, what skilled games you were playing in. There was normal, high, and very high skill level. I am in the very high skill level, and then I read a few different websites with a few different, uh... So basically cross-referenced what I was looking at. And I don't remember the exact numbers of anything but the very high skill bracket, because I did manage to get to that. And the very high skill bracket was the top 3.3% of the players in the world. So, I'm pretty proud of that. I'm pretty excited that I managed to get to that point in my playing, so kudos to me. <clears throat> kudos to me and my buddy Mutanot, he has also managed to achieve that. So I felt pretty good to hit that point. Um, they have since done away with us being able to check that, which makes me a little sad. <clears throat> but normal is like the bottom 1% or whatever, you know, 0% all the way up to like 65 or 70%. And then it's like 70% to 96 points. So, it, you know, there's a really large skill gap. You know, and there's different phases of normal and everything else. But, definitely guys, if you can, check out Dota 2. It's it's an excellent game, it's awesome, and I will definitely have uh, 
quite a few videos up of that. That will be one of my... It is my biggest time sink right now. I've done a lot on YouTube lately, and when I do get a new computer, things will be quicker and easier for me to do. So I won't have to spend as much time doing this, because right now, rendering and some of the other stuff I'm doing takes literally hours to do. So to put up two half-hour videos, oftentimes I'm spending three hours between uploading and doing... Um, using my video editing software, adding just... If there's anything I need to cut out, which very rarely happens, but occasionally I'll get a phone call or something along those lines that I just cut out. <clears throat> um, and then adding the little pixelated effects and stuff, which I'm not going to do with all these playthroughs. I'm sorry, you guys are just going to get the bare bones of what we have here. And then the fade out at the end. Doing that literally takes about 20 minutes to upload the video to the program that uses it or that I can edit with, and then an additional hour afterward to save. I don't know why it's so long. It doesn't make sense to me that it takes uh, that long to do. But, for whatever reason, it does, and there's not really much I can do about it. So, I'm kind of pigeonholed into that, as they say. Fire out here. Let's get that going. Fall back a little bit here. But yeah, guys, I mean... Critical hits. It's a lot more work than you would initially think. I thought it was going to be a lot of work, but it's even more. And there's more that you need to know than you would think you would need to know. Critical hits. That, I suppose, is the, the biggest surprise. Like, I knew this was going to be hard work. And I'm sure you guys are thinking, when you sit around and you talk on, on a microphone while you play a game, how is that hard work? Well, until you do it, <clears throat> you'll see that this is actually a lot more difficult and a lot more challenging than you think. So, that being said, I knew the difficulty would be there and I knew it would be beyond what I assumed it was going to be. Oh my. However, what I was unaware of was how much I needed to know and all the information and just things that you need to know overall about YouTube, about actually it's doing let's... Ooh, that didn't feel good actually doing Let's Plays. I mean, there's a lot to... There's a lot to learn and a lot to know. Like, I'm sure you guys aren't aware that you actually need to get permission from the different developers and things to actually uh, run the ads and things on on these Let's Plays. You need to be able to... Uh, you, you have to make sure you don't play any music. I mean, a lot of people know that part when you're on YouTube. Um... Yeah, so getting in contact with the different things, that's always a challenge. Some games have like a universal, yeah, you guys can do uh, the YouTube partner program, and then setting up the channel, that was a whole fiasco for me. Figuring out how to actually get everything looking the way I wanted to wasn't the easiest thing in the world to do. Then figuring out how to become a partner, and monetizing, and then uploading the videos, tagging. I mean, there's so many things. And I'm still, I'm really stupid when it comes to all this stuff. I have a very limited knowledge of what I'm doing. I'm just trying to get along with what I know, what I've been told. Like I said, Splattercat's the man. He's helped me tremendously. I highly advise you guys check him out. Just don't leave me forever. Come back to me, but yeah, it it's way more involved than you would ever think. So I'm just happy that I'm able to be as successful and accomplish what I have accomplished, which <laughs> on the grand scheme of things, there's very little right now. I mean, I have five subscribers, and I know one of them is my wife. So, I'm pretty sure I know two to three of the five subscribers, so... Those of you who have subscribed to me that I don't know, thank you, I appreciate it greatly. But yeah, I mean, this is a... It's a journey that takes quite a while to get going. I mean, you gotta start somewhere, and usually you start off pretty badly. It's about perseverance and putting out stuff that people actually enjoy. I know I'm not going to be able to please everybody. I know I'm not the end-all be-all of this stuff right now. I'm very new at what I'm doing. So I just hope that I can continue to get better and that you guys will uh, bear with me and enjoy. But enough about everything else, guys. Dota, Splattercat, um, YouTube, everything aside. This is Dungeons & Dreadmore. I'm trying to uh, <laughs> alleviate some of the monotony of this. Oh, that hurts so bad. 
trying to disarm that trap. I think I'm just gonna ignore it. Um, trying to alleviate a little bit of the monotony of this game. I mean, I realize you walk around, you kill stuff, you loot things. There's not much more to the game than that. However, <clears throat> there doesn't need to be. This game is phenomenal the way it is. So I'm quite alright with that. However, I imagine it gets boring me talking about smacking Diggles over and over again, double down on Diggle death. I mean, you know, all the stuff that I say. There's only so much you can do before you repeat to death, and then you just get people annoyed. But, I'm trying to give you guys a little bit of insight into who I am, what I do, where I come from. Uh, my first MMO, I guess. I can go that route. I think the first one I ever tried might have been... It was either Ultima Online or Asheron's Call. But the one that I would claim as mine and that I enjoyed more than anything else was Asheron's Call 2. They killed it, and then they did bring it back, eventually, which is fantastic. However... There was a problem with their bring back, we'll say. And that problem is, I played on a FFA PvP server. So pretty much anywhere you went, at any time, you could be killed by anyone. And, well, nothing really lived up to the game since then, on the regards of PvP. Now, on a lot of games, I don't even PvP anymore, because it all seems so, I don't know, contrived, so weak, so just lame. I mean, when you come from FFA PvP, where you never had a safe spot, you, you know, if you wanted a safe spot to do something, you had to run out into, the, like, some random spot in the world and pray that nobody happened to just be wandering by for absolutely no reason. Oh, that is what I'm looking for. That is the item. And you know what? I have a lot of stuff to sell. I might actually be able to afford that. I don't know, that's a lot of money to make up, but I am going to do everything conceivably possible to do that. If I can achieve that, I will be the happiest Bumpy McSquiggums you guys will ever have heard of, seen, tasted. I don't know about tasted, but definitely be a happy Bumpy McSquiggum. So we are going to go, we are going to put some stuff away, in theory, in the right places. We're going to put this down here, we're going to add this to our alchemical blob of massive horribleness. We're going to add this up here, we're going to throw some more food down here. And... We are going to pick up all of this stuff that we can. And we are going to sell, 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 Your sell. Inventory all right, inventory is full. See what I mean, guys? This is looking like we may actually have a chance. Look at this, a thousand. I mean, we're at, uh, I don't think we're gonna even come close, actually. I thought we had quite a few stuff that were gonna be quite expensive. That we're gonna sell and be able to handle our business with, but it doesn't look like we're gonna come even close. I'm not looking, I don't wanna see until I'm done selling everything. We're at thirteen, so that's not too bad, but we're nearly out of out of items, which makes me quite sad. So we're gonna put up with what we have for now. And we are gonna remember this spot. We are definitely going to remember the spot. We will come back here if we manage to pull out the 40... 1,317. Now, there is one other chance, uh, one other thing I'd like to do, though I don't know what's going to happen and I'm terrified to try it. And that is, will Brax one-hit me if I steal it? Because I am not opposed to stealing from him and running over the stairs and leaving and coming back to a different spot. Because we have just full cleared this place, I'm pretty sure. I do not see any other place that we can go. <sighs> I hate to do that, because I don't know how that's going to affect the game. And I don't want to die because I did something stupid. And ruin this playthrough, because this playthrough is going really well. Considering how terribly awful it started. So I am very, very hesitant to do it. We are not even halfway there. I think I'm going to risk it, guys. I am scared to death. Okay, that didn't really help. We're we're gonna save up our uh yeah. Alright guys, I'm going to munch away on this. And I am going to pick up. Oh no, he blocked me. 
Oh, that's not good. Well... It doesn't seem to be taking any damage. Huh. Oh. So, do I have to put it back down? Well, that's unfortunate, guys. I'm sorry. I'm actually quite sad by this. It does not look like you can actually steal from him anymore. I heard you used to be able to steal from him, and he would summon things and kill you. And fight you. Well, that's unfortunate. But, eh, at least nothing ended my playthrough there. I, I didn't expect him to be able to teleport into the doorway. I figured I blocked him... And I'd be able to get away. Well, regardless, that makes me quite sad, because I really want that item, and we are not quite there. We're not really even that close, to be honest. We're about a quarter of the way there. So, all that the same. Things are going pretty good. We're going to head over here to go downstairs. And I think we will actually break off this episode. Yeah, we're running a little bit long. We're at 36 minutes, so I will get over to the stairs, and we'll... Call it an end to the episode there. Well, thank you guys again for joining me. Uh, feel free to like, comment, subscribe. I tell you this every time. And again, it does help tremendously in both finding the videos and getting the word out there and letting YouTube know that people actually are paying attention. So thank you guys for all that you do. Um, this has been my Bumpy McSquiggum's weekly run, my first week, my week one run through of Dungeons of Dreadmore. This is on <clears throat> Going Rogue, so the hardest difficulty. Permadeath, of course, is enabled. And we have, what, Realm of the Diggle God activated? And we random, so this is just about as scary as you can go in this game. And we're still going, so I'm pretty happy about that. So, <laughs> the white collapses in a pile of ketchup and quanta. I don't know what that is. But, either way, guys, thanks again for viewing. I'm Bumpy McSquiggums, and I will catch you guys in Episode 7.